Hello. Uh, I've been meaning to do a video on this little device here, which is the throttle position sensor used on the um, A0 version of the LMTV with the CAT3116 engine and Allison transmission. The throttle position sensor is a variable resistor. Uh, it has three pins. Uh, the top is A, middle is B, bottom is C. And it has a fixed resistor in it. Um, set lengthwise and then it has a cable actuation that moves a wiper along that fixed resistance. Um, you can measure across the fixed resistance from going to pins A and C. Um, if you measure either A to B or C to B you will get a variable resistance as the cable input is moved uh, as you measure from the wiper to one end of the fixed resistor. The cable actuator comes up here to a fixed block which holds the end of the cable and then the other end hooks to the rotating block on the governor. There are three parts to this alignment. Um, one is mechanical, um, the other is uh, electrical, and we're going to do an electrical check on that device, and then third is programming, and I'll uh, do another short video and uh, put it on the end of this one. Um, this is your throttle block that rotates on top of the governor. This is your throttle cable that comes in from your pedal up in the cab. Uh, it pulls on and rotates this block. Um, your pedal must rotate this block cleanly between the idle stop screw, that's this screw right here with a lock nut on it, and it's contacting the block there. And right below my thumb is the high speed stop screw. It's got a little uh, crimped lead seal and it's safety wired in place so that it doesn't move or vibrate because that sets your maximum engine RPM. You don't want to go over maximum engine RPM. Um, when you rotate the block, it comes in contact with that high speed stop screw right down there by my thumb. You can see the little rust spot on the rotating block. You need to ensure that when you step on your pedal fully that it rotates this block all the way to contact that. If it does not, uh, maybe you have a misadjustment here or you have some issue with the throttle linkage up in the cab. But your pedal in the cab needs to rotate this block cleanly from idle to high speed. Next thing you want to check is that this device slides cleanly in its groove. Um, you also want to ensure that it's all the way at the end of this groove, which means it's holding just a little bit of tension on the resistor, so the resistor wiper is not all the way at one end of its travel. Um, the slot is here in case you have, uh, in case this mechanism, this cable or the resistor fails and jams, um, it won't hold the throttle open when you let off the pedal. The throttle will still be able to rotate back to the idle stop screw in using this groove in case this thing jams up. Uh, okay, now let's look at the electrical component. Um, like I said before, it was a variable resistor, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a ohm meter and we're going to measure between pins A and C. Okay, and mine measures 13.5 K ohms. Um, the resistance needs to be between 9,000 and 15,000 K ohms, so I'm within the acceptable range according to the manual. The next thing we want to do is we want to measure its response when we rotate the throttle linkage. So I'm going to move this red lead up and measure between pins A and B. Okay, so there we go. I have 4.07 K ohms, and that's at my idle position. So now I'm going to rotate the throttle block and you'll see the resistance increase, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9.23 K ohms. And as I let off the block slowly, it rolls back down to 4.07. Okay, that's the wiper sliding along the resistive material. Um, mine appears to be working fine. It looked pretty fairly smooth. It didn't jump all over the place as I moved it. Um, if I could put a lever or some other mechanical bar on here, to uh, lever that around slowly, um, I could I could watch that a little more precisely, 
and look for any rough spots or jumping around. But basically you want a smooth transition from the idle position to the high speed stop position. All right, next I'll show the, the in cab portion on how to tell the transmission control unit to relearn the throttle position information and the shift points. Okay, um, before you start the in cab portion of the throttle and shift point relearn, um, you want to take the truck out, drive it around, warm it up, have it to full operating temperature, then park in a level spot and shut off the ignition switch, shut the truck down. Then you're going to turn the ignition switch back on until you get the normal NN display on the transmission controller. Then you're going to turn the main switch off. Then you're going to turn it right back on until you get the normal display and then turn it off. You're going to do five complete cycles. Five ons, normal display, followed by an off. On your sixth power on, The sixth time you turn on that switch, you're going to take the pedal and you're going to push it all the way to the floor and release it. All the way to the floor and release it. The five on and offs is going to tell the transmission control unit to forget its throttle position and shift point information. On the sixth power on, it's going to be looking for new info. So you're going to give it to it by using your pedal to fully rotate that throttle block between the idle and high speed stop position down on the governor. That mechanical thing you confirmed right at the beginning that your pedal is actually able to do that. As soon as you're done, um, pushing the pedal a couple of times and storing that new information. Push the start button and start the engine. Take the truck out and drive it. Drive through all the gears, up shifting, down shifting, um, so that the transmission can then relearn all of that shift point information. The throttle position sensor plays a huge role in how the Allison transmission shifts. Um, because it uses that information from your foot on the pedal to give it an idea of, hey, am I accelerating? Am I wanting to accelerate? Am I wanting to decelerate? Um, what's going on with the operator? And the Allison will then interpret that information to give you smooth, clean shifts. Um, if that information is inaccurate or not present, let's say your throttle position sensor has failed or become unplugged or there's something wrong with its circuit, um, the transmission controller will fall back to using programmed high and low RPM set points to perform its shifts. Um, the same as it would if you downshifted into um, a lower gear and then you were going downhill and the engine RPM got high enough, it's going to upshift out of that low gear that you've selected and override your selection for the safety of the engine. It's not going to let the engine overspeed. Um, the second to third shift will probably always still be a little bit harsh in these. Um, second to third is the largest ratio jump in the transmission. But Allison also engages lockup in third gear. So if you're accelerating and it jumps into third gear, if the input and turbine RPMs are close enough, the Allison's going to go ahead and close the lockup clutch as well. And that's probably why second to third hits a little bit harder than all the other gears. But they're also smaller ratios. Um, once the Allison engages lockup in third gear, it holds lockup 100% of the time, uh, all the way up through seventh gear and all the way back down into third gear until it anticipates that you're going to be shifting 
back down into second gear, like you're coming closing up on a stop, it will release lock up and drop you back to just the torque converter um, providing the coupling. Uh, when you downshift into second and then you can roll up to a clean stop. Anyway, uh, I hope this helps.